Good morning guys, welcome back to the channel. For this episode, we decided to do something a little bit different. We're gonna show you what we prepare on a weekly basis to have in our fridge so that we can save money here in Mongolia. As you know, in December, we were up in Dachan doing a one hour presentation on deep winter greenhouses. This morning, 30 of those participants, they came down by bus from Dachan to have a look at this greenhouse as they are planning on building geothermal systems up in Dachan, which is absolutely fantastic. The rest of the day, we're actually gonna join the farmers. They're going to look at another greenhouse in Tillage. It's called the Farmhouse. Have a look at what she has done in her greenhouse. On the way back, we're just gonna stop off at the market and pick up some vegetables since we don't go to town very often. Great, so let's head off. Ready? Dog. <laughs> Ready? Go. Me. It's nice to get to come out here and we're gonna have a look. They have a greenhouse that we have met the owner when we were up in Dachan. Nice that the whole group of farmers are here to have a look at what she has done in her greenhouse. So let's go inside and have a look. Flame ran away. Flame! Come, we're going! Finally back home, we had a fantastic time at the farmhouse with all the farmers. On the way back, we just picked up a few things from the market because there are some things that we like to prepare since we don't go to the city so often. And they don't always have the things that we want at the local shop while we're still growing our own vegetables. Things that we like to prepare every two or three weeks so that we have some stuff in our fridge for us to cook. And when we do buy vegetables, we don't buy so much because they will go bad. So we like to preserve our vegetables a little bit. We're gonna make two things very, very simple, which is really easy to do. And we just keep it in the fridge. We're gonna make some simple sauerkraut, which is a fermented sauerkraut. You ferment it with lactose facilis, which is natural bacteria in the air. Some pickles as well. I like to make some pickled red cabbage and some pickled red onions, which is great for additions to food when you are cooking. So these foods are extremely cheap here in Mongolia. If you preserve it and do something nice with it, you can really add flavor to your other dishes. What we have here is a beautiful side piece of pork. We make our own bacon here on the homestead. Mongolian bacon is so expensive. Do it myself, it is much nicer and it's a hell of a lot cheaper. The pork side here goes for around 16,000 Mongolian turu per kilo. Bacon, you can find anything from the worst bacon at about 9,000 Mongolian turu for 200 grams up to something that is okay for about 19,000 Mongolian turu for 200 grams. Making your own bacon in Mongolia is super easy and super simple to do. That's why I wanna show you some of these techniques that we do and can really save you a lot of money in Mongolia. What we're gonna do is we're gonna start on cutting up the veg to make the sauerkraut and the pickled vegetables and I will show you the recipes for that. And then we will start to cure this bacon 
which needs to cure for a few days before we smoke it. A simple sauerkraut is basically just white cabbage. We're gonna slice it all the way down and we're gonna add salt to it and we're gonna let it ferment for a few days to build up that lactose facilis and it's gonna be a perfect addition to food that we're gonna make. I'm just gonna take away some of the outside, which is not so nice. It's gonna go to the chickens. I'm gonna just take away this core by slicing it across like that. Chicken food. You can do this on a mandoline if you like. I like to just do it by hand. Now that I got all the cabbage mixed up, we're gonna add some salt to it. The traditional German way of making sauerkraut also add some caraway seeds. I personally don't like adding caraway seeds. I don't like the flavor, but I like to experiment. I like to do different things. You can add something different to it every time. This time I'm actually gonna add some garlic scapes to it because the flavor is really, really nice and it is extremely cheap in Mongolia. I am not gonna take much maybe 100 grams of garlic scapes, slice them up and add them into this. When it comes to working out how much salt, basically you want to use a ratio of about 2.25% salt to put onto the cabbage. The way to do that is just to take a digital scale, zero the scale, 1.6 kilos. This was 1.6 kilos. So 1% of that is 16 grams of salt. So we want to put in 2.25, which is about 35 grams of salt, which will be enough. Use either a Himalayan rock salt or use a sea salt. Don't use normal table salt. Not much salt is needed. We're just gonna sprinkle it over and start to just mix it in. So we're gonna just leave this for about half an hour. Then we're gonna to start to squeeze it down to get as much of the liquid out as the salt is gonna to start to draw out the liquid and create a salt brine, which is perfect for the fermentation. So we're just gonna put this aside and start on the red cabbage. We're gonna make a pickled red cabbage and we're also going to make pickled red onions. Cut those down and then start to just make a pickling solution to put over these vegetables. test of a chef. Cutting onions but not crying. Zula was doing this, she'll be crying her eyes out. For the pickling solution, it's really, really simple to remember. Three main components. One is spirit vinegar. We are gonna have one part spirit vinegar, two parts of sugar, and three parts of water. That is the basic simple recipe. You can start to change that once you have done it a few times, but we're gonna keep it simple for today. You have a one, two, three method, one part vinegar, two parts sugar, three parts water. We're just gonna take a pot and we're gonna to start to measure up. Put it in three bottles, which is pretty much five deciliters. So now we're gonna add 10 deciliters of sugar and 15 deciliters of water. This up just so it starts to boil and dissolve all the sugar. We're also gonna add in some things for flavoring. Pinch of salt, mustard seeds. Add in about a heaped teaspoon of mustard seeds. Pinch of black pepper and about a teaspoon of thyme. Then we just wait for this to come to a boil. Now that it's boiling, we're gonna pour it over. No need to be perfect here, just share it out. Now we're just gonna put the lid on and a lid over the onions. Then just leave it just so it can start to cool down 
and then we can transfer it from here into another container. While the red onions and red cabbage are pickling, we're going to turn our attention back to the sauerkraut. It's had about half an hour just to rest in the salt. Now it's getting very wet from the salt pulling out the liquid from the cabbage. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna help it because we want more of that juice to come out. We're just gonna take our hands and just squeeze it down. You start getting the liquid is coming out. And then we're just gonna transfer it to a, a vessel and just push it down. Just pour in the juice. And then what we're gonna do is we're just gonna add some plastic and put that inside just to weight it down. You can put a little weight in here if you want just to keep that cabbage underneath the liquid. We're gonna just put a plastic on top. We don't want it to be airtight as this is now going to ferment. We're gonna put this in a dark area, not in sunlight, and let it ferment for about three days. All the bubbles are gonna to start to come up. The lactose facility is gonna to start to work. In three days, we're gonna test it to see if it's fermented enough before we put a lid on and put it in the fridge. That's ready to ferment for the next three days. The red onions and the red cabbage have cooled down a little bit, definitely changed in color. What we're gonna do now is just to transfer it into some mason jars, put them in the fridge and let them continue to pickle for the next day or two. And then just on with the lid. Now those two are ready to go in the fridge and we'll get back to them a bit later. Bacon is very, very simple to do. Basically, it is just a pork belly cured and smoked. To make it easier for ourselves, you can keep it as one big piece, but because the area that I have to smoke it is a little bit small, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna divide this into four pieces, but if you wanna have it longer, so you have long strips of bacon, you can do that, but this is just what we do. The tree pieces into the tray so then when you have our four pieces of pork belly to make up the cure for this what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a simple curing mixture of brown sugar and salt we're gonna use a 50 50 mix 50% brown sugar 50% salt if you are curing in a restaurant or the ones that they do in the shop they will use a curing salt a curing salt is basically salt with a bit of sodium nitrate in it sodium nitrate is not easy to get the sodium nitrate will keep the color of the meat but it's not absolutely 100 necessary to have because we are not using sodium nitrate or curing salt in here we need to add some sort of preservative in there most people will use celery salt i like to use coriander coriander seeds will do the same job as the celery powder no strict recipe exactly how much to use. 50% brown sugar and 50% Himalayan salt. And then I'm gonna add in about 25 grams of coriander. Let's give it all a mix up. So we're gonna pour this over the pork. Just throw in all of it. And then we are just going to really rub it all over the pork.
Because we have a vacuum machine, I'm gonna transfer it to vacuum bags and then just seal it. If you don't have one of these, you just wrap it all up so that the salt and the sugar can start to flavor and draw out the liquid from the meat. And if I have some leftover, just throw it into the bags. So now that we have our pork belly in bags, we're just gonna throw it in the fridge, let it cure for three days. And once that is ready, we'll come back to you and we will throw this on the smoker. I have taken the cured bacon out of the fridge. It's actually been in there for four days. I let it go a little bit longer. I just wanted to make sure that it feels firm and that all the sugar and the salt is dissolved. If it was a bigger piece, I might let it go for seven days, but four days was enough. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna rinse it down under cold water, we're gonna pat it down dry, and then we're gonna take it out and put it on the smoker. What we're gonna do is I'm gonna stick it onto a smoker. There are many different ways to smoke it. You can smoke it on your grill or you can make your own smoker. I happen to have this. It's a very small little smoker. It allows me to put in two pieces at a time. We're gonna have to do two batches. We're gonna use a smoke dust. This is hickory. You can pretty much find this around the world. Maybe not so much in Mongolia, but Mongolians are very good at getting things from overseas. You would need to have some wood smoke chips and a way to heat that up and smoke it. We're gonna smoke it for about 10 minutes just to get that smoke flavor. And then we're gonna slow bake it in the oven just to get it to the right temperature. When you put the smoke chips in, they're very dry, so you want to put a bit of water. I don't have water, I have snow. <laughs> and you want to put the bacon skin side down on a rack, like so. and then we're gonna smoke it for about 10 minutes. If you do this on a bigger smoker, you can do the whole cooking process at one time. Then you would want to keep the temperature at about 90 degrees until your inside temperature is at about 60 degrees. But we're not gonna cook it all the way here. We're just gonna get the smoke flavor and then we're gonna finish it off in the oven because it's too cold in Mongolia to stand out here <laughs> for three hours and smoke it. <laughs> So now it has been about 10 minutes on the smoker. I'm just going to take it out and I'm going to reload some more wood chips and do the second batch and then we will take it inside.
Now that we have smoked it, we want to put it into the oven. You're gonna put it in the oven at 90 degrees centigrade, and we want to find an internal temperature of 66. That's why I'm gonna use this temperature meter. I have set it to 66 degrees, and I'm just going to put it inside around the middle. And this is gonna cook for anything from an hour and a half to two and a half hours and we will have bacon. Now that it has come out of the oven, it's been about two and a half hours. We want this to really cool down so that fat can start to coagulate. I'm gonna cool it down and then I'm gonna put it in the fridge until it is really cold. Then we can slice it and get really nice pieces of bacon. Good job, chef. Thank you. Guys, thank you so much. It came out fantastic. I hope that you get to try any one of these recipes. These are great additions to have on your table for upcoming Lunar New Year. Ta-ra sir. <laughs> <laughs> really hope you enjoyed it. Guys, if you haven't subscribed to our channel, please consider doing so. It will really help us out to make more of these videos. Thank you so much, and we will see you in the next one. Ciao. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.